Hello. Um, I want to do a little experiment here. I want to record myself implementing a feature for uh, the Grizz Pencil 3 project. Um, so let's get right to it. Uh, this is um, Blender 3.6. Can't see the the bottom left here, but um, at the bottom right, sorry. But um, this is Blender 3.6, and we have this feature where you can have multiple strokes, right, with uh, different materials, and so yeah, I have uh, one with a black material, one with a red material, and we have this feature where you can lock a material, and so now I can't select these strokes anymore, I can still select this one. Um, and this feature doesn't exist right now in Grease Pencil 3, so I wanted to see if I can, you know, get something working in, in one session and uh, take you along with me. Um, so let's close this, we don't need it anymore. And let me just rebuild. And let's look at where we are right now in Grease Pencil 3. Um, prepare a sort of a test file here so we don't have to watch me do that. Linking and let's see. Don't really need to use a debug session here, but <laughs> whatever. So this is the file. So again, we have like uh, strokes with different materials, the black one and the red one, but um, let's say I set the material, so assign material uh, to the active one, which is white here in this case. You can see that it changes for all of them. Uh, wait, which is actually correct. Uh, I just noticed that my um, my test file isn't isn't quite right here. Oh, and I'm in edit mode, so I can't undo. Um, yeah, we need to fix that. But I need to lock the red material. Make sure to save the file again. And then uh, assign the material, but yeah, so it doesn't work right now. All right, so we, we have our test file. That's good. Let's see where do we even start, right? Well, let's look at the operator I just used, which is the... Um, um, stroke material set operator um, and see what it does. So here we can see that it um, gets the active object, um, it gets the current material index which is the this is sort of the, the active material slot um, and they are one based so we have to subtract one to get the index and then we just go through all of the editable drawings, right? So you could have um, a lot of them, right? All of the layers and then multi-frame editing. So those are all of the, the drawings that you're currently editing. And we loop through all of them in parallel. And here we get the selected curves as an index mask. Um, and then for each of the selected curves, we um, basically set this um, attribute. So we have an attribute called material index and we, uh, if it exists already we, we get it here or we add it if it doesn't exist. And then for each of the curves we set the material to this, uh, this active material slot. And that's it. Um, so pretty simple and basically what we want to do here, what we want to change is we want to make sure that here instead of just retrieving the selected curves or strokes, um, we want to somehow include the fact that some of them might not be editable. So really what we want is sort of an, an index mask um, of the editable uh, strokes, if I can type. Right. Um, this should actually be const. Um, and so we should put that in the Grease Pencil namespace. Maybe it could be called something like 
uh, retrieve editable strokes. There we go. Um, now, because we want to look at the materials, and materials can be both on the object and on the object data. So I think what we have to pass here is the object itself. And then we also want to pass the drawing for which we want to get the editable strokes. Uh, so this would be info.drawing. Um, and finally, we want to pass the index mask memory here. This, this index mass memory is basically just a way that we can um, have sort of, uh, it's almost like uh, the, the allocator, right? So that we don't have to um, allocate a bunch of memory for uh, multiple um, index, index masks. It's, it's basically just a convenient way to not have to think about where the memory is um, and do like memory management. Um, I'm sure there are other reasons. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think this is sort of what we want to do, right? And then we would just check if that's empty and then don't do anything and otherwise we just go over those um, and have the curve index here. So that would be that would be the idea. Let's see if we can implement it. So that would be in the uh, grease pencil editor namespace. Right, and we have already this API for the drawings here, so let's put this here. Um, start with this, so we have the index mass that we want to return. Um, and yeah, so we want to pass in an object. We can't, I don't think we can use a cons <laughs> reference here, which would be ideal, but most of the material API is still C-like and hasn't been really ported to more modern C++ style, so we just have to accept that and use a mutable reference for now. Uh, so this would be the grease pencil object and then we can pass a const reference to the drawing drawing and uh, then we have the index mask memory. There we go. Yeah, looks good. All right, let's try and see if we can implement that. So this would go into the utils. Yeah, again, this is where we have the other API right now. Cool. Um, maybe for good measure, we'll just assert that the <laughs> object uh, is actually of the right type. So this is OBE Grease Pencil. Um, and all right, what's the first step? So in the end, we want to basically check all the material indices and if they're locked or not. So I think a good first step might be to build like a vector set of material indices. I need to include that here. Uh, that would be in vector set .h. Um, So this would be the locked material indices. Um, yeah. So we can, I guess, just loop over all of the material slots. Uh, something like mat um, i and use an index range. Uh, and this would be, so this is on the object that should be in sync with the um, with the object data materials, I think. Right, and then for each material, we want to actually retrieve the material. So uh, I think that's in material at H. Uh, 
something like get object material get yeah this is what we want because I think this will right this will both look at the object materials but also use the object data in some condition right so this is the API we should use I believe let's go back there we are so we have the material um, material is the material we want to get so um, we have to pass in the right we should include um, material cool um, yep so pass in the grease pencil object and we want to pass in mat i here um, and then if we get a material so if material is not equal to null pointer and um, so now we need to check for the material settings for grease pencil so this is stored in oops material right need to add the DNA for that material types material grease pencil style uh, so this is the grease pencil information um, so if that's also not equal to a pointer and then we can check if the is it's in the flag right yes and there we have the locked flag okay so we have to check if the flag um then we do the classic material locked uh, so we want to end it with that and we'll check if that thing is not equal to zero so if the flag is set then we know that this material is um, one of the materials that's locked. So we should put that uh, index here into our locked materials. So we can do an add, I guess we can use add new here even. Um, I believe that's the add a new, yeah. Yeah, but we can, since we're iterating over a range here, we know that every one of these is gonna be a new one. So we can use add new here and be a bit more efficient, cool. So now we should have all of the lock materials. Um, so let's maybe first start by figuring out which are the unlocked um, grease pencil strokes. Um, so really what we want to do is we want to get to the attributes. So uh, let's start by going to uh, get the curves. Uh, yeah, I think this should be const. Const curves, and that's the drawing. And we get the strokes. Maybe I should call it strokes, but we've been sort of inconsistent with that a bit. They are curves uh, in the end, so I'm going to be <laughs> consistent with the rest of the code for now. Um, and then we have a um, const attribute reader uh, let's see uh, where can I copy some code for that in the curve selection yes cool so this is the function that we use to retrieve the selected curves but uh, we want to get the attribute access oh which is also in the kernel should have Remember that. 
Uh, right, and I guess we need to include... That's a bit strange that it doesn't know about this stuff. But uh, we can, of course, include that. So this would be um, curves dot hh. Um, all right, and then we want to access the material indices. So that would be a uh, virtual array of type int material in the series. Um, and we're gonna go to attributes and look up um, look up our default material index is I think the name can double check that. Grease pencil convert legacy. This is usually what I check to see how we rename things from old to new. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, we have a mutable attribute accessor, but we don't really want to create this material uh, index attribute, right? We just want to retrieve it, and if it's not there, we just have to use a default value. Um, but it's on the domain curve. That is true. Um, yeah, now we have the default value, so let's just use negative one. That should be good. And I think we just dereference that, and that should work with the API. Yeah, cool. Because it gets an attribute reader, but that can be converted to a virtual array um, using some operator overload. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so we have the material indices, and then what we're basically going to do is um, let's create an index mask memory. Uh, thingy thing, and then do a const index mask. And I think we're just going to use from predicate. So uh, this would be the unlocked materials, and that would be uh, index mask dot from predicate. Right. So the universe <laughs> in this case is the um, curves range. Let's actually get that. Um, index range, curves range, uh, and that's just curves dot curves range. Cool. And so that's our universe. Um, the grain size, yeah. So let's um, let's just do something big. Oops. And get the memory and find the predicate, which in this case I think it's just going to be the index. So this is a lambda that builds the actual index mask, right? So I think what we get here is like const and um, index, which in our case would be the curve index. And uh, what we want to do here is just return, oops, Turn. Uh, well, we yeah. Let's let's do it the clean way and do a const and material index is our material indices. The curve index, and then uh, yeah, and then what we return is um, we want to look up if this index here is in this vector set, so we do a contains, yeah, contains material index. And if it's not in there, then we return true, because that's that means that it's unlocked. 
cool. And then let's do another index mask and let's get the selected um, strokes or just uh, selection I think works as well. In this case we can just reuse the uh, the function that we have in the curves geometry so um, that's in ed curves um, and this is the retrieve selected curves there we go uh, and I think this has one yeah we just pass in the curves geometry so we pass in the curves here and we pass in the memory and that gives us an index mask of um, what curves are selected within the whole curves geometry. Um, right, and once we have that, we basically want to combine them, right? So what we want to do, we might have multiple ways of um, retreating editable strokes, but I think for now what I'm going to do to get our example working, right? Remember we have this operator here. Uh, const. Okay, uh, something is not right, but we'll figure that out. Um, we want to get the strokes that are selected and have an unlocked material. So we, yeah, we, we basically want to do like an, a sort of AND operation on these two in this index masks, uh, which I don't think we have. Um, from, from Union. Uh, that do the right thing. We want to do an intersection. So, no, this is not what we want to do. We don't want to union them because we want to figure out where they're both true. So, I think we're just we're just going to use a from predicate here. This can be um, can be rewritten in a in a better way in the future. Uh, we basically want to reuse this API here um, like that, and then we want to say um, if Turn. Um, unlocked materials at curve I. Uh, wait, no, 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 sorry. Uh, dot contains curve I. Yeah, and this is why it's a bit expensive to do this. But, you know, we'll do this for now and um, and deal with it in the future. And selection contains curve i. So now we're doing the okay. If, if both of the in index masks contain that index, then we know that this is an editable curve, and we build the index mask from that and return it. Cool. So yeah, that looks good. Um, let's see if we can get our thing working here. Uh, retrieve editable strokes. Uh, memory, memory. Okay, it's not like the fact that I'm making this const here. Maybe. No. Okay. Not sure what's going on, but we can figure it out. Let's see what the. Oh, do I need to pass that by reference? I think I do. Yeah. 
double check how that's used in the curve selection. Yeah, it's passed by reference. That makes sense. I don't want to copy <laughs> the memory. I want to reuse the one that I declared in the uh, this place here. Cool. So now it works. Um, and yeah, we check if we're empty, then return. So actually, we could put this guy here. Just check if that's there first. Then get curves, and then actually uh, look up or add the thing. So let's see if that works. We shadow a parameter. Oh, right, right. <laughs> because I. <laughs> I don't want to create this memory here. I actually want to use the memory I'm getting um, from from outside. All right, and it looks like we're linking. Perfect. So now we got to debug the code. Let's see if it works. Obviously, this is just changing one of the operators, right? Um, Basically, all of the other operators will have to somehow use this API or a future API that does something similar, like maybe we want to retrieve the editable points instead of the strokes. Uh, but let's see how we're doing with this operator. <coughs> mm -hmm. Right, so that material is locked. We have the white one selected, so let's do our assigned material. And it didn't work. All right, so we will have to do some debugging. Um, let's first see what happens with our locked uh, material indices. Does this have a print or something? That would be awesome. Probably at the very bottom. Clear. Private. No. Count collision. I didn't see one. I guess I can just try. Uh, see out. And line there. Oops. And it doesn't like it. Okay. Uh, in that case, we just print out the index here. Maybe something like locked material. Uh, just for debugging purposes here. And yeah, let's print that on. New lines. Mm. Because obviously, if this is empty, then we're just going to change everything that's selected. Mm. And yeah, so unlocked materials. So yeah. That seems good. Is three zero one two three. Right, because <laughs> okay, so this is a classic uh, material slot indexing problem. The material slots are one index based and not zero index based, so we have to pass. Um, this plus one here, and uh, let's see. 
see what happens. Because obviously the, the index should have been 2 um, instead of 3. That would also explain why um, we didn't see the red ones not changing, because it would have picked the one material below that um, instead of the correct one. Yeah, this is a classic material slot uh, thing. Sign material. Here we go. That works. Cool. Um, so just had the off by one error here with the getting the material. Uh, if we look in here, um, you can see that it it takes the, you know it subtracts one here because that's the actual index because they're one based. Um, yeah, then it uses that to index into the material slots. Uh, material arrays, I mean. So yeah. Um, but that's it. So we pretty much now have um, uh, a function here that can give us the... Uh, let's remove the print here. That can give us the editable strokes. And we can, of course, expand this in the future, right? If we, if we have something else that uh, means you can't edit a stroke for some reason. We could add that to this function, and hopefully every operator would use that um, to get the editable editable strokes. Um, but yeah, cool. That only took like half an hour, which is uh, awesome. Um, and I think we can stop the video here. Um, let me know if you enjoyed that, and uh, see you in the next video, maybe.